I have an ionic bond in which I have a positive ion and I have a negative ion. They attract each other and therefore, you know, I have uh, something like NaCl or, uh, you know, something like uh, uh, MgCl2, right? It's actually slightly covalent, CaCl2 and so on and so forth. On the other hand, I have a variety which is this covalent bonds in which I have sharing of electrons. So I have, uh, you know, oxygen, I have hydrogen and they share electrons. The electrons are not really a part of one or the other atom. They lie somewhere in between, right? Concept number one that I'm going to talk about is called polarization. Polarization states that no molecule that we have is strictly ionic or strictly covalent. Every ionic compound has some covalent nature. Every covalent compound, you know, will have some amount of polarity. Is that fine? Everyone. So that is concept number one. Polarization. Right. So I'll tell you how this uh, basically occurs. Let's start with the ionic part, right? So I have a very positively charged small nucleus over here. Right. And I have a, you know, very large number of electrons and therefore a negatively charged entity over here. Right. And these two are attracted and they form an ionic bond. Let's say the bond is formed. The ionic bond is formed. What happens next? All of us know that this positive charge will attract these electrons and these electrons are, you know, loosely bonded. So they can stretch. Everyone, they can stretch, right? They will be pulled, right? So this is what we call polarization. So this is a strictly ionic bond, right? This is what we call a polarized bond. So these electrons, which were supposed to be with one atom, now lie somewhere in between. So this is the this is one atom. This is the other atom. There are electrons which lie somewhere in between. So there is this is what we call covalent characteristic of an ionic bond. And we call it polarization, right? So that is concept number one. Uh, Coming back, this is what we have discussed. No bond is 100% ionic in nature. There is always, always some covalent character associated to it, right? We'll discuss how to figure that out in a short while. But this is the most important part here, right? There is always some covalent character associated, right? Basically, what happens is I have a very huge, uh, uh, you know, an ion over here, which has a lot of electrons around it. And all these electrons will repel each other. So they are already, you know, sort of expanding, right? A very huge and imagine that if I bring a positive charge near it, right? Yes, they will attract each other and I have a, I will have an ionic bond. But additionally, what will happen? Additionally, all these electrons which are anyway want to go away from each other, right? Which are only held together because there is a small nucleus in the anion which is holding them together. They will be attracted towards this, right? So I get an entity which looks something like this. This is the, the cation. This is the nucleus of the anion and this is the uh, the electrons, right? The electrons stretch something like this, right? And therefore, there is some electron density in between, in between the two uh, ions. That is what, how we, we define covalent bonds, right? In covalent bonds, there are two atoms, there are electrons in between. So there is some covalent character associated with ionic bonds. And that is what we, we talk about. So, and that is what we call polarization. If you have NaCl and LiCl, which compound will have greater polarization? That is the question over here, right? Which compound will have overall greater polarization? That is the question. 